What's going on, baseball fans? How you doing? So, the Phillies just recently hired Dave Dombrowski, so I found it fitting to do a video on how to fix the Philadelphia Phillies. Let's not waste any time. Let's get to it. The first order of business is to let D.D. Gregorius, Jay Bruce, Jake Arrieta, and David Robertson go elsewhere in free agency, which is a good chunk of change coming off the books, roughly around $60 million, and puts the Phillies' payroll roughly at around $146 million right now. However, with the Phillies saying they're in a bind financially, we want to achieve more payroll flexibility, so I think it would do them a lot of good to get out of Zach Wheeler's contract. They did just sign him last offseason, I understand, but he's set to make a about $96.5 million over the next four seasons. While the Phillies have come out and denied reports that Zach Wheeler is not on the market, I personally think moving his big contract would help immensely. And hey, when there's smoke, there's gotta be fire. To be able to get rid of that contract, the Phillies would most likely have to agree to pay some of Wheeler's contract as well as maybe taking on some salary in return. For the sake of this video, let's do a trade of Zach Wheeler and Cash to the Diamondbacks for Nick Ahmed, Corbin Martin, and Kevin Ginkle. This would address needs for both sides. For the Diamondbacks, they ranked 27th in starting pitching last season. Bringing in someone like Wheeler to go alongside Zach Gallon would be a good one-two punch. And if they can get bounce back seasons for Madison Bumgarner and Luke Weaver, that could end up being a very good rotation. In return, the Phillies would be getting some pieces to address some needs. First, they would get Nick Ahmed, who won't give you too much with the bat, but he's one of the premier gloves at shortstop, and the Phillies only ranked 22nd in defense at the position last season. Next, they would get the Diamondbacks' number six prospect overall, right-hander Corbin Martin. Last but not least, they would get back reliever Kevin Ginkle, who had a breakout rookie season for the Diamondbacks in 2019, but he struggled last season. If he could bounce back for 2021, that would give a very weak Phillies bullpen a big boost. Next up, we're going to trade Gene Segura, which will help clear a bit more payroll. However, in this deal, we're going to send Segura to Toronto for Tanner Roark and pitching prospect Patrick Murphy. The Phillies will have to take back Roark's salary of $12 million, but we're getting rid of Segura's salary for next season, so it will shed a couple of million dollars, and we won't have to worry about paying Segura for next season. And Roark will be coming off the books next season as well. However, Roark has done much better in his career in the National National League, shown by an ERA of 3.66 compared to an ERA of 5.61 in the American League, so I think this would be a good fit, especially considering we just traded away Zach Wheeler and we need a replacement for him. Taking place of Gene Segura at second will be Scott Kingery, who had a down 2020, but he started off the season with COVID and he just never really got it going. He showed a lot of promise in 2019, so I expect him to have a productive 2021 season in place of Segura. Segura. When all is said and done, with the Phillies able to get rid of Wheeler and Segura while bringing back Nick Ahmed and Tanner Roark, that would bring the Phillies' payroll from an estimated $146 million to about $128 million right now. Now that we have some money cleared, it's time to put an end to the nonsense. John Middleton, I get it. You got hit in the mouth financially with the pandemic, so did everyone else. However, now that we have traded Zach Wheeler in this universe, of course, along with Gene Segura, and with guys like Jake Arrieta, Didi Gregorius, Jay Bruce, and David Robertson coming off the books, there should be plenty of money available to bring Real Muto back on a deal that works for everyone. Simply put, he's the best catcher in today's game. He hits for both power and average. He plays in the field as good as any catcher, and he works with a pitching staff very well. This is a guy you want for the next few years alongside Bryce Harper in that lineup as the Phillies try to get into serious playoff contention. Let's bring him back on a five-year, $110 million deal. With an average salary of around $22 million per year, this would now put the Phillies' estimated payroll to be around $150 million right now. With Zach Wheeler traded away in this universe, of course, that leaves a hole in the Phillies' rotation behind Aaron Nola. I know we just got Tanner Roark, but I still think we need some more. One guy that should be available in a trade is Pirates right-hander Joe Musgrove. He did have some issues with his triceps last season, but overall in nine starts, he was solid. 
posting a 3.42 FIP and over 12 strikeouts per nine. I think a trade of center fielder Adam Hazley, the Phillies' number two prospect, shortstop Bryson Stott, and their number four prospect, right-hander Francisco Morales, should get the job done. This would give the Phillies a rotation of Aaron Nola, Joe Musgrove, Zach Eflin, Tanner Roark, and Corbin Martin heading into 2021. This also means that we can see Vince Velasquez go to the bullpen, which I think will suit him well since he hasn't panned out too much as a starter, but he has good strikeout numbers for the bullpen, and he has shown some promise out of there in the last couple of seasons. Now that we've traded Adam Hazley to the Pirates in the Joe Musgrove deal, Scott Kingery now manning second base in place of Segura, and Roman Quinn being more of a fourth outfielder, the Phillies have a hole in center field. The perfect option is sitting right there in free agency, and one that myself and Dave Dombrowski are pretty familiar with, Jackie Bradley Jr. He's one of the best defensive outfielders in the game, while also providing an okay bat, posting a 742 OPS with an average of 14 homers per season since 20. 18, and also posted an 814 OPS last season while hitting 283. He's also a left-handed bat, which a pretty righty-heavy Phillies lineup could use, especially now with Nick Ahmed in place of Didi Gregorius. Let's sign JBJ to a three-year, $30 million contract with an average salary of $10 million per year. This will bring the Phillies' 2021 payroll to $160 million. Simply put, this bullpen has been a complete dumpster fire for a while now, and something needs to be done. However, where the Phillies need to tighten up the bullpen the most is in high leverage situations. When you look at the Phillies bullpen from last season in high leverage situations, they ranked dead last in ERA with a 13.80. Yes, a 13.80. That is just awful and 29th in FIP with a 6.12. That's terrible as well. They weren't all that much better in medium leverage situations either, only posting a 4.45 FIP that ranked 18th and a 5.22 ERA that ranked 24th. There are some bright spots in that bullpen, however, with Hector Norris, who posted a 2.50 FIP, along with 11 strikeouts per nine, David Hale, who posted a 3.78 FIP between the Yankees and the Phillies last season, Blake Parker, who did walk about five batters per nine, but he posted a 3.38 FIP while averaging 14 strikeouts per nine. There's also Ranger Suarez, who missed pretty much all of 2020 after testing positive for COVID in the beginning of the season, but he did have a very good 2019 season. Also, since we brought in Tanner Roark and the Gene Segura trade, Vince Velasquez can go to the bullpen as well. So, to sum it up, I think the Phillies have enough when it comes to middle relief and setup options, which means we need to focus on bringing in a closer. So let's bring in the best available reliever there is, Liam Hendricks. This guy has been dominant for the athletics over the last three seasons, averaging a 2.17 FIP and about 12 strikeouts per nine. I think a deal for three years and 45 million should get the job done. However, I also think, just for insurance, the Phillies should bring in one more arm, one that's reliable and won't cost an arm and a leg. To me, that's Tyler Clippert. He doesn't throw the hardest of all the relievers out there, but he shouldn't cost too much, and he's pitched at least 60 innings a season going back to 2009, and simply, he's just gotten the job done. Let's sign him to a two-year deal for $6 million. Let's recap this offseason. When the smoke has cleared, we will have gotten rid of Wheeler and Segura, re-signed JT Realmuto, traded for Nick Ahmed and Tanner Roark, and signed Jackie Bradley Jr., Liam Hendricks, and Tyler Clippard. This would give the Phillies a payroll of roughly around $178 million, which would be $9 million less from their 2020 payroll of $187 million. With trading away Zach Wheeler and Gene Segura last offseason, along with Andrew McCutcheon, Vince Velasquez, and Tanner Roark coming off the books this offseason, this gives the Phillies an estimated payroll of around $146.5 million. This should give the Phillies enough room to sign a player or two without even getting close to the luxury tax line. 
The first guy I want to bring in is Tommy Pham for left field in place of Andrew McCutcheon. He had a down 2020 season with the Padres, but due to his track record, I'm expecting a bounce back 2021 season more in line of what we're used to seeing from him, which would be something around a 270 to 280 batting average, a 350 to 370 on base, around 20 homers, 15 to 20 stolen bases, and some decent defense out in left field. He would also be a great fit near the top of the order for the Phillies. When I look at the free agent market for starting pitchers in 2022, one name jumps off the screen, and that's Max Scherzer. This is a guy that's very familiar with the NL East due to his time with the Nationals. He's a bulldog, a competitor, and simply put, one of the best arms in the game. At this point, he will be 37, turning 38. But with this probably being his last contract before calling it a career, I can see him being motivated to go after one more ring. And because of his good track record of health, I think he'll be good to go. Let's sign Max Scherzer to a three-year, $66 million deal, which at $22 million a year, this would set the Phillies' payroll at around $170 million. This would give the Phillies a rotation of Aaron Nola, Max Scherzer, Joe Musgrove, Zach Eflin, and Corbin Martin. I think that rotation could be very dangerous in the playoffs. So that's how I would fix the Philadelphia Phillies. Tell me what you think down below. Do you think I have some good ideas? Do you think I'm a complete idiot? Tell me down below. But that's all I got for today's video. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.